If you follow the Real Home Recording community post, and you've already seen this, but I figured I'd make it a regular old video. So I thought, I wish I would have thought of this idea years ago. So, you know, this is a printout of hardware that I use either in the box or with remote um, hardware rentals. I'm, I'm referring to mix analog and access analog. And so I'll, I'll just tell you guys what these are. And it's, it's a little silly that I printed these out, but I mean, come on, you know, they're going to go hang on that wall right there next to the computer. So that I seem, uh, you know, I look like I have a cooler studio than I actually do. So first of all, this black box HG2, it's a, it's got a, I think three different tube stages in it with transformers. It just makes individual tracks and mixes and buses sound bigger, more depth. If you want some, some thickness, you do the pentode. If you want some extra high mids punch, go with the triode. I, I just don't want to mix without this plugin, and, and I don't want to master without it either. The API 5500. Now this one, I'm pretty much saying this is, this represents all the API EQs. So the 550B, the 550A, the 560. I like API, period, okay, for all kinds of tracks. So And actually the 5500 sounds good on certain mixes as well. And then... Below that, we have the Trident A-Range Equalizer, okay? And this bad boy is great for snare drum, great on guitars. So, um, very, very, it's just different. It's different from like a Neve or an API. Uh, I don't use it too much, but like I said, for snare drum, also sounds good on bass guitar, guitars in general, strings in general. All right, so next up. We have the, this is the Stam Audio. If you guys don't know, Stam Audio are releasing an emulation, or I should say a, a hardware clone of the Sontec MES-432, which is a very, very famous mastering equalizer. And I've been using the IK Multimedia plugin of this for years, primarily for mastering, but I use it for vocals as well. So it gets put on the printout. And then beneath that, we have the Solid State Logic X Logic Alpha Channel. And this is a representation of an SSL channel strip. It, I know it doesn't have oh, I know it doesn't have the compressor in it or the um, the gate. And I think it's missing something else too. But basically it's it's similar to an SSL 9000 or, or 9000 J or K. Um, but that's why I printed it out. Third on this list is the Bracosti Design Model 7 Reverb, which for those that don't know, it is essentially a modern lexicon. So I, when I added it to this list, I'm like, let me just put all the lexicon reverbs and call it this. And because on Access Analog, I do use this reverb um, it, only for special occasions, though. <laughs> but the M7's right there. Uh, I would love to have a real one. I mean, that goes for any of these. I mean, I would, my goodness, you know, if I win the lottery, I'm going to go crazy. But anyway, uh, this one, I would actually get this instead of the real deal because it combines an LA-2A and an LA-3A in one compressor. It is called the Stam Audio SA-23A or 23A. And um, yeah, so next up, Again, these are all of my most used plugins and in some cases real hardware. All right, first of all, we have the Motor City Equalizer from Heritage Audio. And it is the, uh, what's it called? The Motown Equalizer. So the Motown Equalizer, I always say if API and Pultec had a baby, this is the result. Okay, and this was used for all kinds of things. I like it as a different kind of EQ. I like it uh, mostly for if I'm pretending like I'm recording, I call it the virtual recording console, or uh, for mastering, for buses. I don't typically use it on individ 
on individual tracks while mixing because at that point I'm probably using an SSL equalizer. But uh, for all the other tasks, it's a cool, it's a different tone shaping kind of sound. So, and I actually, my preference goes to the Noise Ash rendition of this plugin because it has more frequency plots. Okay, next up is this is actually a screenshot from Mix Analogs. They have like a, an 1176 with that, that has three different flavors in it. So they have a stereo 1176 compressor that um, it's the revision A, which is the blue face, which is what you're looking at right now, the silver and the blue. And then we have the revision D, which had a black face plate. And then we also have the G, which I always say sounds like an LA-3A. Um, very, very similar. I believe the transformer in that is very similar. I believe that's also a black face plate. Um, but anyway, 1176 used very often. I have a real one. I have a real one. Uh, Stam Audio sent me one years ago, and I'm hanging on to it. Probably until the day I die. Silver Bullet Mark II from Louder Than Liftoff. Uh, I, I fell in love with this one. I would say, honestly, there's a big gear space forum thread about this. And I just was like, man, I can't wait to get my hands on one of these one day. And then, boom, Access Analog was born. And they have one up on their server. I don't know if it's still on there right now. I haven't checked. But um, if it's still on there, great. If not, guess what? There is a... I, I, should, I should mention they have the original Silver Bullet. Now, this one is actually... Uh, a plug-in. This is actually the plug-in version of the Mark II because the real one uh, says says Mark II somewhere around there or Silver Bullet. Uh, but this is the plug-in because I couldn't find a high-resolution picture of the hardware. Uh, but yeah, this... So basically what this does is it has an API flavor, a um, Neve transformer flavor, and an SSL transformer flavor all combined into one piece of hardware and it just sounds oh and also it has an equalizer so like on this it's kind of like a Poltec and anyway it's got a little bit of an equalizer in it too just a very cool overall piece of hardware and I would love to have one in my rack that does not exist right now but you know <laughs> my my assumed rack because I do have two rack mount pieces of hardware right now so maybe one day I'll, I'll get a rack Necessit uh, for some reason that reminds me of that uh, movie Wayne's World so next up is the Mu Alicia or El 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 Elijah I, I don't know how to pronounce that Q. I don't use this very often primarily because on mix analog it, it's pretty expensive to use but when I do, it gets used, and I love it. And I, I got the plug-in for this probably six months ago. So I'm, I'm planning on using it a lot more. I'm going to say primarily just like with the, the Motown EQ uh, for shaping because it doesn't have that many... Um, Q plots it does have like one change on here but it, it's not like an SSL where you can change the Q and get very very precise but what it can do is very very good very expensive piece of hardware um, yeah I'll just leave it at that it's it's a dual mono stereo whatever you want to call it you know you, actually it's technically dual mono because you get controls for both channels and then they have a cool feature down here called Warm. Um, yeah, I love it. Good stuff. Finally, our last piece of paper. I mean, do I really need to talk about the Distressor? This is just, in my opinion, like... <laughs> what's the best way to put it? If it, it, it is the Desert Island. Like, if you only had one compressor... The distressor would be it. It just has so many features. And it's not that difficult to use. You know, you got four main big controls. Okay. 
and two of them are the input and output knob. And then you got your ratio button slash switch down here. You have some things talking about um, uh, distortion two. I, I get these backwards all the time, but one of them sounds like tubes. The other one sounds like tapes. And then they also, there's also, I call it the sibilant switch. Helps with getting rid of sibilants in vocals. So you can really slam the compressor and it, it doesn't sound bad. And then we also have high pass for the, um, the key detector. Good stuff. And of course, the if you look on here, it says British mode. That's, a, that's similar to the 1176 all buttons in mode. And um, the Nuke is essentially a brick wall limiter. And I would say, again, this is like having, I think, seven compressors in one piece of hardware. And it's really not that expensive relative to other professional audio gear. I think one of these runs you about $1,800 for this British mode one. And the one without the British mode is cheaper than that. Anyway, moving on. So the Shelford channel, it's a representation of all the different Neve equalizers that I like to use. And preamp. Um, but if I could only have one, and I... Well, honestly, the Neve 1081 is probably my favorite. But, but, as far as, you know versatility is concerned because this also has a nice compressor built into it so shelford channel it would be shelford channel uh you know it's I, I call it rupert neve's swan song i think it was one of the last pieces of hardware he designed before he died or one of the last ones that were released before he died okay Next up, second to last, is the Retro Instruments Model 2A3 Program Equalizer. So this is a stereo version of the Poltec. So this is tubes. There's tubes built into this, okay? In the real deal. So it is a Poltec clone with, I think, this 16 kilohertz. This is like an extra, extra one. I'm not 100% sure. But it, the main feature for me is this subsonic filter which allows you to do a high pass or I should, yeah a high pass at either 40 hertz or 80 hertz so that you can do that low end kick drum trick where you set it to 60 and then you boost it and then you attenuate it and then you you know use this one to boost the the mid range for the kick drum glorious you put that subsonic filter on glorious so I would pick this over a real Poltec reissue. And then finally, one more piece of solid state logic gear. This is their Bus Plus. Okay? The Bus Plus. With one S, not two. So the Bus Plus, not only does it have a mixed bus compressor, which is what SSL is most famous for when it comes to compressors. I like their channel compressor too, but their mixed bus compressor is more famous. This also has a dynamic equalizer in a piece of hardware. That's pretty amazing. So yeah, you know, primarily used for stereo mixing, but you can use it on tracks too. Why not? But anyway, there you go. So I may or may not hang these on the wall. I, pro I, I may get like a bigger 19 inch wide printout made of these and laminate it in gloss, you know, but for now, eight and a half, 11 by eight and a half by 11 inches pieces of paper. It's, it's going to go up there. Oh, <laughs> going to go up there and hang and be in the background it's a little goofy but it is what it is